Hanzo Hasashi Compound, Japan, 1617. Hanzo Hasashi is the leader of the mighty ninjutsu clan Shirai Ryu. He brings buckets of water, along with his son. His wife is harvesting vegetables with the kunai. She asks Hanzo to bring more water. Their little daughter starts crying. The son goes in to pacify her. Hanzo goes to the well. When the daughter continues crying, the mother gets in to comfort her. When she gets in, she sees the guard thrust upon the door, stabbed through with a splash of blood. She puts her daughter's cradle in the secret space under the floor. Then holds on to her son and goes toward the door. Bai Han, from the outworld clan of Lin Kei, appears before them. He has the superpower to turn everything into ice. He asks about Hanzo, but the wife refuses to tell him. He stabs the ice spikes and freezes them. Hanzo, meanwhile, starts filling up the buckets. When he turns to leave, he hears the scream of his wife. He runs toward their compound. He finds his wife and son frozen under the ice spikes. Some other warriors attack him too, but he finishes them all, first with the sword, then he ties a rope with the kunai and spears them all. Then he goes to the area where Bai Han has been waiting for him. He claims that he is going to end Hanzo Hasashi's bloodline after exterminating him. They have a fierce fight, but Bai Han overcomes him, and thrusts Hanzo Hasashi's spear into his body, Hanzo Hasashi asks him to remember his face. Then he falls. Bai Han leaves the place with his head high. After a while, Hanzo's body burns up to ashes. Suddenly it starts raining, as the Thunder Master Raiden has arrived. He takes Hanzo's daughter, and the kunai stained with Hanzo Hasashi's blood, and disappears into a lightning portal. Four thousand years later, a prophecy has been made that the outworld will be defeated by the bloodline of Hanzo Hasashi, but the outworld beasts have remained victorious nine times in a row against the Earth Realm, and now they are hoping to win for the tenth time, after which they will invade the Earth, as they think that they have changed the prophecy after eliminating Hanzo Hasashi's clan. In Earth Realm, Ally ties the strap around her husband Cole's hands as he is getting ready for the wrestling match to win $200. His daughter Emily is getting other stuff. The trainer gets in and tells him that he is facing Ramirez, an experienced fighter. He asks him to give the people a good show. He gets into the cage and the fight begins. A black man named Rax gets into the fight club and starts watching him. Emily cheers her father to keep on fighting, but despite being close to winning, he taps to give up. In the outworld, Bai Han, who is now Sub-Zero, with his icy eyes, armor and mask, is walking up to the throne of Shang Tsung. His leader says that they might lose the 10th Mortal Kombat, as per the prophecy. Sub-Zero assures him of their win, as he sent Hanzo Hasashi into hell many centuries ago. Shang Tsung orders him to finish all the champions of the Earth, to leave no loophole before the tournament. Back in Earthrealm, in the washroom of the Fight Club, Cole Young is washing up his face after the fight. When he looks up at the mirror, he sees a red, blazing shadow. He gets out and sits on the bench with his daughter, who is making a string bracelet for him, the same as hers. She ties it around his wrist. Jax gets in there and praises him for the good fight. He asks about the dragon mark that Cole has on his chest. He replies that it is a birthmark. Then he gets up, along with Emily, to go and eat something, bidding Jax farewell. Emily and Cole are sitting at the outdoor table of the cafe. After a while, Ally gets there too, and goes into the cafe along with Cole, leaving Emily on the table. They wonder what's going on when they see the snow falling outside in July. Suddenly, the snow turns into crystal spikes, then it rises high supernaturally and falls. Cole runs to Emily and gets her under the table. Jax rides in on his jeep and asks Cole to get in. The young family gets into the jeep. Jax rides it off. While they turn onto another road, they see a man standing in the fog. Jax tells Cole that the man is chasing him, as he has that mark, which means he is the chosen one to fight the evils. Jax gets out of the jeep with his gun and asks him to take his family to a safe place, and then get to Sonia Blade, at 806 West Washington Boulevard. Cole rides off, leaving Jax behind. Jax, on the other hand, shoots at Sub-Zero, but he attacks back and breaks his gun into pieces. He freezes his arms and cuts them off, then pushes him down from the building. In the outworld, the master plans to break all rules set by the gods and end the fighters before the tournament. Cole drops Ally and Emily home and goes to meet Sonia as Jax instructed. She takes him into a room where the walls have been covered with different clues and pictures of the heroes from the past, 
and their feuds with the outworld. Sonya tells him about the mortal combat for which he has been chosen. Cole sees Hanzo Hasashi and recognizes him as the man who comes into his visions. Then he finds a man who is chained up. He introduces himself as Kano. Sonya tells him that she found that miscreant when she was chasing a warrior. Suddenly they hear thudding and roaring. A shadow dragon has attacked them. Sonya and Cole try to fight it down. Kano gets his chains melted with the dragon's hot saliva. Then, he attacks it and takes out its heart. He brags about being a dragon slayer. After a while, Sonya makes a deal with Kano to take them to the place where the warriors get trained to fight the outworld. He takes them to the deserted place on a plane with his friend. It drops them in the desert with mounds of sand and mountains. They walk on foot to reach it. When the sun starts to set, a man in ninja clothes comes to them, introducing himself as Lu Kong, from the Order of Light. He has the power to blaze fire from his hand. He takes them to Raiden's temple, hidden away in a cave, crossing the secret door. The pictures of the history of Mortal Kombat tournaments have been engraved there. Cole gets astonished to see the man, who comes into his vision being stabbed in one of the pictures. He adds that they have to start training, as the fate of the earth is in their hands. Sonya hears some noise and investigates, shocked to find Jax, without his arms, lying unconscious. Liu Kang tells her that they have found the treatment, and takes her, along with the others, to Lord Raiden, the master of the warriors with lightning eyes. He says that they are not capable of fighting the enemy who has knocked them down nine times, and if they fail to defeat them, Shang Tsung will invade the earth and enslave its people. Cole asks him to help, as he will sacrifice his life to save his family. While Liu Kang is meditating to strengthen his power, Sub-Zero gets into the cave and tries to attack him with the spikes, but he is saved by his cousin, the fighter Kung Lao. Then Shang Tsung gets there, along with Melina, another evil crook, to end the fighters. But Raiden appears from the thunder portal and hits his wand to make a shield to protect the champions. They leave the place after threatening them. Liu Kang takes Cole, Kon, and Sonya, along with Kung Lao, to the fighting pit, to help them unlock their arcana, the superpower that comes forth during intense pain. Kung Lao asks Sonya to leave, as she does not have any arcana to wake up, as only the chosen ones have it. Kung Lao fights with Cole in the pit, but Cole ends up wounded. Then Liu Kong defeats Kano too. Sonya, meanwhile, goes to the place where Jax lies. Jax awakens, agitated, to see new metallic arms attached to his body. Sonya tells him the whole story about what's happened to them all. The next day, Cole gives a good fight to Kung Lao. But Kano fails again. Elsewhere, Jax tries to practice punching with his artificial arms. When they gather to take a meal, Kung Lao swears at Kano for his uselessness. Kano's right eye goes an intense red, and a burning laser light comes out of it. He is very happy upon discovering his arcana. Cole faces Kano in the fight pit to discover his superpower, but fails once again. Next, we see Cole sitting alone in the cave. He is looking at his picture of Ally and Emily. By that time, Lord Raiden gets there, saying that he is failing to find his arcana, despite continuous efforts. Cole inquires about the mark that he has had since his birth, unlike the other fighters, who got it after fighting evil. Raiden tells him that he has got the birthmark from his lineage, that of a ninjutsu warrior, Hanzo Hasashi, who was assassinated along with his family by Sub-Zero, the same man who is after him now. He adds that he hid his surviving daughter, and the mark descended through the bloodline to Cole. He then makes a lightning portal and asks him to go back to his family, as without his arcana, he is only a liability to the other fighters. Cole gets into the portal to reunite with his family. In the outworld, Shang Tsung gathers his warriors, the flying hunter Nitera, Cable, a metallic machine with laser red eyes, General Reiko with a hammer, and Melina. He tells them that the fighters of the earth have nothing in them. He adds that the only trouble is breaking Raiden's shield, which prevents them from entering the temple. Cable says that he will crack a deal with Kano. The doors open and Prince Goro, a mighty beast with four arms, comes in. In the Earth Realm, Cable meets Kano outside the shield. He makes a deal with him to join their league, so he would not have to take orders from anybody, as with them he is free to make his own choices. Kano accepts his offer and takes down the shield. In the meanwhile, Cole hears a thudding sound. He goes outside and finds Prince Gogo there, looking for him. He asks his family to get inside and runs toward Gogo to fight. Gogo throws him away. After pinning Cole down, he goes toward his family to attack, 
and at that moment Cole's arcana comes out. The golden armor spreads over his body with red blazes on the chest. He runs to Gogo and pushes him away. Gogo punches him again. The blazes in his chest travel to his wrist and swords come out. He cuts his hand, stabs his chest, and then pokes the swords in his eyes. Gogo falls, lifeless. At the sanctuary, Shan Tsung enters from a dark portal into the fight pit, along with his warriors. He asks his warriors to end the champions. Melina goes to defeat Sonia, and gets her down, but leaves her there, considering her unworthy, as she is not the chosen one. Cable faces Liu Kong and Reiko fights with Jax. Kung Lao throws his metallic hat toward Shang Tsung, but misses the shot. Tsung orders Nitera to finish Kung Lao. But he cuts her down with his metallic hat. Outworld warriors get the upper hand, after putting the champions down. Kano throws a big stone at Sonya. Jax tries to pull the stone with his metallic arms, when he sees his friend in trouble. While pulling the stone, the weak metal structure turns into strong arms. He pulls the stone above his head and throws it away. Lord Raiden gets into the fight pit. He makes a portal for Cole to get back. Cole, after seeing the portal, jumps through into the fray. Shan Tsung is astonished to see Cole. Raiden says that Hanzo Hasashi's bloodline is destined to rise. Then he creates the portal for the way out. Raiden, along with Jax and Sonya, disappear. Cole has been stopped by Sub-Zero, but Kung Lao helps him get into the portal. Shang Tsung holds him by the neck to suck out his soul. Liu Kang tries to save his cousin, but Shang takes Kung Lao's life. Raiden takes Liu out of the fight pit. Now they are in another realm. Liu sits down in grief, holding Kung Lao's hat. He says that the earth realm is lost without Kung Lao. Lord Raiden gives the blood-stained kunai to Cole, saying that the blood is of his ancestor Hanzo Hasashi. He adds that he must use it to bring forth the spirit of Hanzo. Cole takes it and suggests a new plan to defeat the outworld warriors. He says that they have to split them. He asks Raiden to send Sonya to fight Kano, and Jax for Reiko, and Liu to end Cable, and leave Melina to him. He adds that they will fight against Sub-Zero together. Raiden sends them all to the Earth Realm to fight their rivals. Jax splits Reiko's head open, and Sonya gets the dragon mark after eliminating Kano. On the other hand, Liu Kong burns Cable. Whereas Melina is giving a tough fight to Cole. When she attacks from behind, Sonya gets there and makes a hole in her stomach with her newly discovered arcana. The champions put down the warriors. Elsewhere, Ally and Emily are packing up to leave their home and run, when Sub-Zero gets there and abducts them. Then he makes a black portal and goes to the place where Cole and Sonya have just ended Melina. He shows Cole the frozen string bracelet, then breaks it down and gets back into a portal. Cole runs into the portal to save his family. The portal takes him to a frozen place. Sub-Zero attacks him, to end Hanzo Hasashi's bloodline. Sub-Zero attacks him, whereas Cole takes out the stained blade and tries to attack back, but Sub-Zero wounds Cole's hand with the same blade. The blood drips into the old stain, and the spirit of Hanzo Hasashi, wearing a hooded armor and mask, suddenly appears. While Sub-Zero raises the blade in the air to stab Cole, Hanzo pulls Sub-Zero back, thrusting a blazing spear into his arm. Hanzo fights Sub-Zero while Cole goes into the cage to break the ice spikes that freeze his family. Sub-Zero freezes Hanzo and attacks Cole, but he thrusts his sword into his heart. By that time, Hanzo takes out his frozen hand, blazes up the fire, and melts the ice. Cole's family are freed. Hanzo asks him to leave Sub-Zero to him and rescue his family. Hanzo removes his mask, and asks Sub-Zero if he remembers the face. He adds that he was not burning in hell, rather, he learned to control the fire. Then he burns Sub-Zero by blowing fire at him. He then goes to Cole, takes off his mask, and disappears, after asking him to take care of his bloodline. After a while, Lord Raiden gets there, along with the other champions. He praises Cole for the victory. Shang Tsung walks in over his defeat. He threatens Lord Raiden that next time, he will bring armies, as this fight must go on. Raiden makes a lightning portal and sends Shang Tsung back to the outworld. Then he says that they cannot put down the shield, despite winning. He adds that he will make a new list of champions, and they have to take them to the academy. In the last scene, Cole is taking his things out of the locker room of the fight club. The trainer gets there and tells him that he has to fight in the next match at night. Cole refuses to fight, saying that he is no longer fighting for 200 bucks. 
Then he heads toward Hollywood to find a new champion.